the last video, we covered what exactly a reduction is and how we can use reductions to show that a problem is unsolvable. We used the truth problem and the halting problem as examples to demonstrate how reducing the halting problem to the truth problem would show that the truth problem is undecidable. And all that was left to cover was to show that we can perform the reduction, which is what we will go through in this video. To show that a problem is undecidable using reductions, we do it through a proof by contradiction. I've included the proof in writing in the description below as a reference, so feel free to look at that to follow along. The truth problem asks whether we can write a program that determines if another program will return true. Let us now assume for the sake of contradiction that there is a program that decides the truth problem. We now show the reduction. So this new program, let's call it T, will take a program as input and return true if a program returns true, or return false if the program does not return true. And when it does not return true, it may either be because the program returned false, or the program simply never stops. In case you forgot, the halting problem asks whether we can write a program that determines if another program halts. Now we build a program, which we call H, that uses program T to solve the halting problem. We know this actually cannot be done, but we assume it can be for the sake of contradiction, because we want to show that we can reduce the halting problem to the truth problem. So how can we build H using T? We define H as follows. H takes in a program as input and immediately gives it to T. T then scans through the program and tells us if the program will return true, or if the program does not return true. At this point, we know that if the program returns true, the program most certainly halted, and H will return true. However, if T determines that the program does not return true, then the program either returned false, or it may have just never stopped running. But to properly define H and show the reduction, we need a clear description for when H returns false. So to do that, we may have to get a little creative. If T said that the program did not return true, we take the program back and change the program. For every return true statement, we change it to return false, and for every return false statement, we change it to return true. By doing this and giving the modified program back to T, we know that when T says it returns true this time, the original program had actually returned false, and therefore the program halted. But at this point, if T says the modified program does not return true, then we know for sure that the program does not ever return and instead keeps running which means it never halts. So here we have a clear description of how program H will use program T. The reduction is complete. And we can finally say that this contradicts what we know, since we showed that the halting problem reduces to the truth problem, and we know that the halting problem is undecidable, then the truth problem is also undecidable. Because if the truth problem was solvable, and program T existed, then we would have solved the halting problem. Reductions are tricky and definitely take time and practice to understand and perform. But don't be discouraged. The more proofs and examples you see, the better you will be at reducing problems.